Well, we're going to talk about arcs and chords. So we're going to add arcs to our arsenal of what we talked about. Well, arc is if you had a circle that looks like this, and this angle was x degrees, an arc is the length from here all the way across to here. So that's what the arc is. Okay, so this is A and B. The measure of arc A and B is notated as such. Okay. Actually, this angle provides us with another arc. Okay, so there's an arc from here to here. There's an arc from here all the way across around to here. Okay. So no, so this guy here would be called we will call the minor arc, whereas to go from here to here, what you'll call the major arc. So the major arc is always going to be larger, unless we're like this, right? If we're from here to here, then this guy and this guy are going to be the same, right? Major or minor is going to be the same because right? you're cutting it right in half, right? And that is in the middle of page 802, shows you the definition of a minor arc, a major arc, and a semi-circle. Right. So if this angle was 60 degrees, right, your minor arc is going to be 60 degrees. It is the same as the central angle. And this is the central angle here. The arc length is the same as the angle. Okay. So let's look at example number one. The circle graph shown shows the types of music sold during one week at a music store. And you have not learned this as a circle graph. You have learned this as a, what do you call this? Pie chart, right? You call it a pie chart. You learn this as a pie chart. Pie chart, right? Okay. And how do you draw a pie chart? Has anybody has anything drawn a pie chart before? Huh? Not accurately, right? How would you normally draw a pie chart? If I asked you to draw a pie chart and I gave you this data here, right? If I gave you this data. You would just open up your Excel spreadsheet and you would just enter the thing and click draw a pie chart. And the Excel spreadsheet would draw a pie chart for you, correct? And that's how you would normally do it, right? And let's look at the rock portion. The rock portion is 25%, correct? Which means that that arc length, that red arc length A to B, is going to be what? What would the arc length be? Right. It's 90 degrees, okay? It's 90 degrees. When you were, if you were to draw this by hand, you would put a 90 degree there, right? Because it is 25% of the 360 degrees, correct? All right? And that's how you would draw it, right? You say, okay, well, I do this, I get this is 90 degrees, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it 90 degrees, and I'm going to draw it 90 degrees. And you would do that for everything else the 13%, the 26%, you would do the same thing. For the 13%, you would go like this and say 13%, and you would find out what that is, and you would draw that accordingly using your what protractor, right? Okay, you would draw it that way. Okay, so what are we trying to do? We're trying to find MBC. The BC is going to be 13. Well, it's actually, it's this one right here, right? 13%. This is example one. So 13%, you would go ahead and do this, and it would be. So, there's a zero here, and I go two, one, two, forty-six point eight. Forty-six point eight would be your answer. Okay. Top of page eight hundred three. There was an adjacent arc. Adjacent meaning what? What was adjacent? Next to where do we use that? 
when we were doing the sine and cosine and tangents, when we talked about adjacent, right? Adjacent, right? adjacent meaning, so here the adjacent arc is the same length. So we're going to do what we're saying here is that if we had a C here, A, B, and C are adjacent because they are right next to each other, right? And obviously we can see here, if this is Y, then the AC length of this arc from here to here, it's going to be this guy plus this guy, right? And that's all they're saying, right? A, B, B, C. That's that example number two, using the arc, it's called, it's called the arc addition postulate. I'm not interested in you memorizing this name. I'm more interested in you understanding what it means. I'm never gonna ask you, so I write down the, what? Arc addition postulate. I'm not gonna ask you to do that, okay? But I will, Want you to understand that the, this arc length from here to here is from here to here plus here to here when they are adjacent to each other. Okay. Step number two finds the arc length of C, D, and E. Okay, well, C, D is what? What's the arc length for C and D? Anybody? 90 degrees, right? 90, and then the D and E is what? 18, so you add them together, you get one away, right? Simple as that. And then in the middle of page 803, we have congruent arcs. So as long as the central angles are the same, the arcs associated with those central angles will be the same, regardless of where they are among, along the circle. Uh, theorem 12, 2.2, shows that the congruent, so in a circle or, a con or congruent circles, number one, congruent central angles have central uh, congruent chords, and they also have congruent arcs, okay? Remember the difference between a chord and an arc, right? So if we had, from here to here, an arc would be from here to here, A, B. Chord would be from here straight, a straight line down this one, right? Chord would be like that. Take us down the rail and go here. Get the page. Example number three, apply congruent angles, arcs, and chords. Find each measure. If the chord R, S, and T, U are congruent, find the arc length of R and S. I mean, for arc length from R to S. Okay, so the, you have the chord, the arc lengths of 3X and 2X plus 7, 27. So you have 3X is equal to 2X plus 27. You have to solve for x, right? So you would go ahead and subtract 2x from both sides. Pretty simple, x equal to 27. So the actual length, our length is going to be 3x, so it's 3 times 27, 81. 81. B. Circles B and E are congruent. And AC and DF are congruent. Find the angle measure of DEF. Okay. Since the chords I and mean, the arcs are congruent, that means that the central angles 5y plus 5 and 7y minus 43 are going to be the same, right? We're going to set those equal to each other. Plus five. Well, you see, I have to solve for x. How would I do that? 
Sophie? trying to find the actual central angle. So you have to put this back into 5x plus 5, right? 120 plus 5. 125 would be your answer. Right? So let's go ahead and go to page 805 on the top. There are a couple of theorems there. They're the, they're the same thing, one is the converse of the other. So if you look at that, what does it say? It says, in a circle, if a radius or diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. Okay. So what we're doing here is that. And so if I have a chord that looks like this, and it bisects this, and it's 90 degrees, and it has to go through the center, and it becomes either the radius or the diameter, is what it's saying, okay? Right. And the reason being is because it shares this, this squared plus this squared is that, this squared plus this squared is that, and they are both the radii, right? They're the same radius, right? So it has to be bisected like that. All right, example number four, using radii in chords, find a BD. BD. Three, two, and A, B, C, D, D, A, B, C, D, E. And we're trying to find the length of B, D, but this is going to be bisected. So I can just find this guy here multiplied by two, correct? Okay. So what do I have here? I have three here. This here is a radius. What's the radius? Five. So this guy here is going to be five. Which means that this guy here, I don't know what it is. We'll call it x. x squared plus three squared is equal to five squared, correct? Right? So we had, because we have this right triangle here. X is equal to four, which means that BD is equal to two times the four, which is eight, right? And oh, we're done. Um, one more is. Two through thirty-two. 